All right, it's your turn. Give me a jingle on the landline, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Oh, and another thing on Mondays, you know Mondays, we give away a dozen cookies to Sophie's Chatterbox. <laughs> Delicious bakery, fantastic restaurant at Sophie's. So I urge you to be listening Monday at 8.30. We give away a dozen cookies. We've done this for a long, long time. And... Uh, uh, nobody, well, the exception of one person. One person has decided to call me up and say, can I share my cookies with you? <laughs> and I took them up on it, too. I had one of their cookies. But uh, don't forget, that's Monday for new first-time winners. Sophie's Chatterbox, 530 E Street in Rupert. All right, give me a call, 436 436-224-1-866-927-4587. This weekend, I, I'm really honest with you on this one, folks, about my fears and trepidations. I think that the march against guns all across the United States, including one of the marches is going to be held in Boise, Idaho this weekend, I think it is going to lead to a lot of turmoil. I think it's going to lead to a lot of dissension. I think it's going to lead to a lot of finger pointing at our Constitution and our Second Amendment. I think it's going to lead to more of the big money people like the Michael Bloomberg's Hollywood in general, uh, Bill de Blasio, and many, many more that are funding these anti-gun marches. They are going to look for as much anarchy and yelling and railing against us, legal gun owners, and this is going to create a big, huge problem. And I think we as gun owners, we need to stand up, and I think it's high time we organized. We didn't put all the onus on the back of the NRA. We stood up and say, enough. In a rural area, it is your responsibility, in my opinion, to defend and protect your family and yourself. You are the first line of defense. I don't think you're going to do it by taking bow and arrow lessons. I absolutely think that with these march against guns, it's going to create so much of an anti-gun bias in this country that if we, legal gun owners, don't stand up soon and say and do something that's going to be counteractive to what they're trying to do, we're in a lot of trouble. We are in a lot of trouble. What are your thoughts? It's easy for people here to say, well, they'll never get my gun. Well, they'll never pry it out of my fingers. Well, wait a minute. Don't play John Wayne on this issue. Somebody easily could knock on your door and say, Mr. Smith or Mr. Jones, we know that you have XYZ in guns, and we are here to get them. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. Um, speaking of this rioting and things, I'll tell you something I had experienced. <clears throat> this is this was a long time ago. It was in the I have to say early '60s. I had a good friend. Uh, I think he's still alive, but at that time. He had spent a lot of time in Mexico City, employed there under circumstances. And uh, I was talking to him one time because he'd come back home and for a while. And <clears throat> I asked him about, uh, I had heard this rumor that the uh, communist flag flew with the Mexican flag over the Capitol building. And he said, yeah, that's not only true over the Capitol building, but over every military installation the communist flag flies with the mexican flag because they're being trained by the communist government communist army but he went on to tell me he said and this stuff i know too he says because he had had 
So, and that was so strong. He said that you cannot believe the pressure that that puts on the Mexican government because it would be flare-ups of uncontrollable riot, and it would be turned violent if necessary. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're using that as a possible equation as to what may happen, what might happen with some of the marches and the anti-gun folks that are making a thrust upon our economy and our government to change uh, the gun laws of the Second Amendment. Is that basically the synopsis? You are seeing precisely what I'm saying. Yeah. They are organized here in the United States, and they trigger these riots, and these young people do not know why they're doing it. They are just or- organized, and they riot, but they don't know why. No, and I think uh, there's one point that you made there at the end, and I'm going to stop you right there, sir, and I'm going to ask Wheels. Wheels, again, I'm getting a lot of static. How is it sounding at the station? Please. And I don't know where Wheels is, but... Uh, uh, caller, I will say this, that what you're saying is, I think, the naivete of our citizenry in this country. Uh, we don't think that this is going to happen here. We're lulled into kind of an Alice in Wonderland attitude like, oh, well, they'll just go away. They're not going to go away. They're going to get stronger because we're not doing anything. And they will also say, that won't happen here. This yeah. The United States. Yeah. We are the greatest. But it is here. They're totally organized, and these rioting young people have no idea why they're doing it. I couldn't agree more. Do it. I could not agree more. Sir, that was an excellent conversation. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. See you later. You Bye. bet. Uh, caller number two, I'll be right there. Wheels again. I know you were answering the phone, old buddy, but uh, I've been I've been sending down the line. I'm getting a lot of static. How is it there at the station again? Please. Maybe uh, it's my... I was going to say that it, on my end it picked up a little bit more, too, okay. so All maybe right. we can switch phones at the top of We'll the do that, and I'll take that next call in just a moment. Stand by, caller. I want to remind everybody about Barry Equipment and Rental. And these phone lines can be so blankety, blankety, blanky temperamental. I apologize for that, but we can't do a thing about it. Uh, Barry Equipment and Rental Sales Service and Parts, they've got three locations. 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin, and in Napa. And I urge you to remember they are Idaho's premier Bobcat and Doosan equipment sales service and parts dealership and they've got all the Bobcats I mean they got all shapes and sizes new and used for all of your equipment rentals and retail equipment sales I mean really I urge you to get a hold of the guys that have the big sandbox out behind to let you learn how to run the equipment Barry Equipment and Rental in Burley Twin Falls and Napa Barry Equipment and Rental caller I'm sorry to hold you up Good morning, you're on the air. Good morning again. I I hate to bother you again, but I got something that I think ought to be brought out about this deal that that gentleman was just talking about. Now, when this shooting took place in Florida, one of the uh, victim's father has really come forth, and, and he's really got the pot stirred. The idea of having these children go outside during class time to protest this is absolutely positively the wrong thing to do. Oh, I agree. These kids don't even know why they're doing it, except it's a chance for them to get a little fresh air. Well, let me just say this. I will never restrict anyone at any age if they're qualified in their knowledge to go out and speak out about any subject. And I think that there are many, many high school juniors and seniors which are very, very knowledgeable about what's going on in the world. However, I don't think I like the idea at all of the liberal left leading these kids with phraseology and what to say, what not to say, how to answer various questions questions and letting them be pawns for an anti-gun movement which you know doggone well keith caught him that's what's happening in this country i know and you know when we think back at berkeley the first time they ever did something like this and it really got people stirred up yeah. they're doing it now but they're doing it with our youth and i'll tell you what i am downright angry about that because it is totally unnecessary to drag these kids into something that they don't know or don't understand.
understand. Uh, that is the key right there, and they're not taxpayers. They haven't raised families. They haven't fought for this country. They really, the haven'ts outweigh the haves. And I don't like these kids being focal points on the 6 o'clock news demanding that uh, guns be confiscated or gun laws be changed or whatever. They are not the voting constituary. And I am and you are. Keith, i got another call waiting. Thank you so much. You bet. All right, thank you. Caller, I'll be right there. Once again, I don't want you to forget about our friends at Airvana with uh, Lennox. Oh, a new Lennox home comfort system. Woo, in your home, and you can possibly get up to $1,700 in rebates through our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. Airvana is just another way to make you feel better. Contact Ramsey's today at 678-0459 or visit the website RamseyOnline.com. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Thank you. Good morning. Two things. Number one, selfish chatterbox. Fantastic. We special ordered some cookies for uh, Ag Appreciation Days, and they delivered the best cookies we could have ever asked for. Yeah, and thanks a lot for sending me one. Yeah, not a problem. Okay. Anyway, the other thing, <laughs> the other thing I know that there are a lot of people, me included, who no longer buy a hunting license. Because when you buy a hunting license, they pretty well know what you've got for guns. If you buy one to hunt big animals, game animals, they know you've got a rifle. If you buy one for uh, birds, they know you've got a shotgun. And so I know a lot of people that no longer go hunting because they don't want it known what they've got. Well, I will say this. I don't want to go that far, Sharon, because I'm a legal gun owner. I belong to the NRA. I'm proud of being a legal gun owner. I like to hunt when I get the occasion. I love to go fishing. I am not going to stymie what I like to do for the fear of having somebody investigate me as a legal, abide-by-the-law citizen. I'm not, I don't feel oppressed like that at all. But I'm going to fight like the devil to make sure they don't take my rights away. Yeah, well, well like I said, I know, I know, I know several people that are, are in that boat. They will not buy licenses anymore for that reason. And you know, and, and I, I agree with them. I, I can see that because it's another way of knowing what we have. But then again, you're right. You've given up that opportunity to go out and enjoy a sport that you once upon a time did enjoy. Yeah. And that's sad. Uh, I, I, I'm looking here. I think you, you know, look... These kids that they're having, these pawns that they're having go out, that is solely Hitlerish. That they would use... Is that a word, Hitlerish? That they would use the youth to promote this gun control, another way of controlling and taking over, and brainwashing, and it's, it's just another mechanism, another step... Control. Well, that's exactly my point, it has been that for the last many months on this program. The seven-letter word control is exactly what the left wants. They are just mm -hmm. absolutely frothing at the mouth because Trump won. They are frothing yeah. at the mouth because Trump has reduced the regulatory system in this country, thrown a lot of regulations away, and is creating, I think, America like it used to be, a free society, and he's helped business, he's helped free up the economy, and they can't stand that. There's got to be more control, and they're chomping at the bit. Yep. Well, and, and Hitler used the youth to make everything look great. Well, we're doing it for the kids. Yeah, yeah, this is for yeah. the future. Yeah. But we're doing this for the safety of the kids, and people bought into it. Yep. And, and that's what's happening now. It's Hitlerish. The old adage, and I dare somebody to tell me I'm wrong, history repeats itself. Oh, my gosh, and it is, and we're watching it. I agree. Thank you, Sharon. Drive carefully. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye -bye. Thank you. Caller, I'll be right there. Please do not go away. Don't pass go. Do not collect $200. The check will bounce, and I'll be right with you. Don't forget again, where in the world am I at here? Oh, yes, our friends are going to have a ripping good sale on Saturday, and that's Roggy Auctions. They're going to have their big spring consignment sale at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds at 10 a.m. this coming Saturday. Don't miss it. I mean, they've got some outstanding stuff. I mean, farm equipment, guns, lawn and garden, panels 
gates, shop equipment, pickup trucks, ATVs. Whoa, going to be a sale. Going to be a sale put on by Roggy Auctions. Cade and Ron and Jed. This Saturday, starting at 10 a.m., Minidoka County Fairgrounds, managed by Roggy Auctions. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Thank you. Jeff, this is a good news, guy. We're having chicken salad sandwiches at the Senior Center for Senior today, and tomorrow's chicken dinner, and Friday's pulled pork, but the good news is I'm buying lunch for a single senior or a couple that has never been there before, and these meals are fantastic. you just got to come out and enjoy lunch with us. We need you. All right. Well, Joe, every day you're such a great ambassador for the Senior Junction right there on Overland and Burley. And Joe Taylor said, hey, if you're new in the area, a single person or maybe a couple that's never been there before to enjoy the great food at the Senior Junction, come on over. And and when you walk in the door, just yell for Joe Taylor and he'll wave the money in the air and buy your lunch. Have a good day. We appreciate it. <laughs> okay. All, you All right, buddy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Taylor, I love that guy. He is something else. I'm. I, it's my pleasure to know him. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. There was a news clip that was used by all the networks, all the networks, of a young girl... I'm estimating, I should say guesstimating, her age was about 16, maybe 17, from the hospital, or the hospital, the school in Florida, Douglas High School. And they have used that clip incessantly. Uh, she was railing about guns, etc. And I don't blame the teenagers for feeling the way they do. My goodness, no. I mean, they have become targets in an environment that's supposed to be so safe. Our schools. Our schools. But the left and the liberal media utilize this girl, I think, and I'll stand behind this, that she was so well rehearsed and very theatrical in her approach at the microphone. And they're absolutely using these kids like her as pawns for the anti-gun movement in this country. And have you ever really sat down and thought, really give it some thought, as to this afternoon at 3 o'clock, if there would be a nationwide push campaign to go house to house And the government would say, you either give up your guns or, because we know you have the guns, you will be under arrest. Now, the way that they would do this, quite frankly, it brings reminiscences of a lot of people that can look back and read and study the history of what happened under Hitler You really don't have a leg to stand on. And if you resist, you can write the end of your own story. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Let's get a weather forecast on here really fast. And the weather brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And they are right behind the Minidoka Hospital, across from the emergency room. And the number to call to make an appointment, and you should right now, 312-0957. They've got all kinds of testing abilities over there to help diagnose one of the most common causes of vertigo very very serious and they can help they will help dr pickup and dr mitchell at mount harrison audiology and hearing aids 312-0957 right now here's the weather Looks like we have a storm system that's rolling into the valley and could stick around for the next couple of days. Here's your weather forecast for Zebeth Ranch. Rain showers likely mostly before noon. Cloudy skies looking at a high of 52. Winds out of the east right around 8 miles an hour. Be coming out of the southwest by this afternoon and could gust as high as 20 miles an hour. For tonight, 50% chance of showers in the forecast mostly after midnight. Possible snow showers in the higher elevations. 
Mostly cloudy skies with a low of 42. Tomorrow, 80% chance of rain showers in the forecast, high of 56. Windy as well, gusts as high as 25 miles an hour. For Friday, we do have a very slight chance of sunshine. Could see a sliver of it with a high of 52. And then more clouds going to be rolling in for Friday night with a low of 33. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 20% chance of showers in the forecast, mostly cloudy skies. That is your weather for Zebedee. Uh, thank you very much. And the weather brought to you by some really, really good friends of ours. And you can trust your hearing health to Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. With Dr. Pickup and Dr. Mitchell, I urge you. I really do because I've done this and absolutely they help me. Call for a hearing screening at 312-0957, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Oh, come on, give me a call, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. I will say this, and I urge you to help me on this issue. Pay attention to what is done, what is said across the United States this weekend in regards to this uh, supposed march against guns, which is, hopefully they think, to employ thousands and thousands, literally, some people have said millions, of people to try to reestablish or rewrite the gun laws in this country. Write down what you see. Write down what you hear. Write down some of the emotion. And we'll talk about this on Monday, because I'll tell you what, I have a feeling it's going to be extremely chilling and worrisome. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Hi, Deb. With all this talk about taking our guns and stuff, what are they going to do now that they have had all these horrible bombings and all this mayhem that's gone on with with this gooey bum that's been doing them? And no, not a gun was involved. It just goes to show that it it isn't going to do any good to take away our guns from the good people. These goofy people are going to find a way to kill others. Well, okay, okay, you said it, and I'm going to agree with you in its entirety. And it leads to one simple four-letter word that's in our society today, I think more prominent than ever, and that is the word evil. Right. That's right. Satan has got his hand in all of this, and it's 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 just evil. It is ludicrous for me if I were a politician back in D.C. to tell you in southern Idaho, I do not want you to protect yourself. I do not want you to have the ability to provide your own security. I want you to be open season for all the bad guys. That's the way it is. Take it or leave it. That's what's coming in this country, and we're not doing anything to stand up and fight back. It sure seems that way. We've got to stand up for ourselves and turn to God. Right there. I totally agree with you. Actually, and I'm so thankful you said that, because that's the one thing I think that we've got away from in this country, more so than anything else. We've turned our back on the good Lord, and in some respects, maybe, he's turned his back on us. You have a good day, Seth. All right. God bless you. Thank you very much. Uh, she's right. It's time to turn back to the values, moral values, spiritual values, and simply put, like the lady said, turn back to God. And by the way, if somebody out there doesn't like that, I really couldn't care less. Bennett Boys Auction Service, they're going to have Bag and Farms Auction this Saturday, March 24th, located over in Buell, Idaho, from the Buell Medical Center. Go one mile to the east, and then north two miles, then three-quarters of a mile east. I tell you what, you'll see the signs. Don't miss it. They're going to have an outstanding, uh, lots of planters and corrugators and tractors, John Deere tractors. This is a sale you do not want to miss. Managed by Bennett Boys Auction Service, Joe Bennett and the entire crew. Remember, Bennett Boys Auction Service, there is no sale. Too big or too small, the Bennett Boys sell them all. That's coming up on this Saturday. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yes, you know what? You know, this turning, you know, each one of us has a responsibility. 
to be responsible for our behavior and uh, as parents and a father, I mean a father and a husband, we need to always remember that. But you see, when we turn away from God, you know, we, we will suffer the consequences of our decisions because, you know, there has been nobody that could ever prove there, that, that there is no God, not even close. So you run the risk of, you know, one day, if you turn away and you intentionally turn away and you, you know it, you will be held accountable. Is it a risk worth taking? I, I don't think so. And, uh, you know, we all can see the evidence of turning away. And, uh, you know, we can act like it doesn't matter. But, you know, we will suffer, our families will suffer, and then our country will fall apart. Amen. The of our nation are, are, is a strong family. Amen. If father and husband does his job, he, we can rebuild this thing if you care enough to do so. I agree. Boy, I'll tell you what, you could write that last little bit down, put it in a paragraph, and I'd recite it every day on my program. Randy, thank you for your call. i got to get a Les Schwab spot in, but thank you, my dear friend. Thank you. you that was well said. Hey, by the way, I know my friends at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, they have been so good to me and my business. I'll tell you, they've got a great big spring tire sale. I love talking about these folks. They are the best. They've got a spring tire sale going on right now. Check out the Eclipse tire for your car. All season traction, advanced tread design starting at just sixty one ninety seven. They've got all the tires for your pickups and SUVs, horse trailers, boat trailers. Yes, it's time to think about that. So get in there today at any one of the seven locations and the best in brake service and the best in front end alignment shocks and struts, batteries but above all the best in service. I tell you this every day. They run out to your car. May we help you? You tell them what you need, and bing, bang, boom, you're back on the highway driving safely. There you go. Spring tire sale at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers with Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. The best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Deanne made some zucchini bread. I'm going to sit here and chomp on that. I'm going to send you to the news from CBS. I'll be back in seven minutes. Ah, here we go, hour number two. It is dreary outside, to say the least. Good morning, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, and they have a big spring tire sale going on right now, along with some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Also, we want to acknowledge our dear, dear friends with Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're always the shortest to Western Way Services, we care about our community, our resources, and this free land. Western Way Services is lending a hand, always at your Maybe you just moved into the area and you don't know who to call. Well, don't call Ghostbusters. Call Garbage Busters. That's who they are. Western Way Services always taking care of your garbage. Getting rid of it because they're always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969. Get on the route service and stand there and wave goodbye to your garbage every week. Absolutely the best. Western Way Services, 734-6969. Want to remind you, too, about our friend Friends with uh, Lennox and the uh, Airvana, defined as the ultimate level of comfort you'll achieve with the presence of a new Lennox home comfort system. And you contact Ramsey Heating and Electric today, and you could possibly get up to seventeen hundred dollars in rebates. Woohoo! Airvana is just another great way to make you feel better. So contact Ramsey Heating and Electric at six seven eight zero four five nine, or visit them on the website at RamseysOnline.com. 
Uh, one other thing I want to mention, and this has been extremely interesting with some really good, interesting people locally, and that's every Thursday at 917, we have our Cashier Regional Hospital update that provides you a real insight to some of the fantastic people that are your neighbors that live right here and are helping you with your health care. I urge you to tune in and listen tomorrow at 917. Interesting, very well-informed people serving you at Cashier Regional Hospital. Quality care close to home and that's on tomorrow morning at 9 17 uh, i've got one other good word but we're going to kind of forego that and go with this next gentleman because he is such a dear friend we missed him last week he was en route someplace up in the air going someplace good morning dave Bego. how are you uh, good morning uh, zeb i'm okay except um you won't believe this. Overnight, we had about three inches of snow here in Indianapolis, and uh, this is supposed to be the first day of spring. <laughs> well, into every life, a little rain, and in your case, snow must fall. I don't want to have any more snow here. I don't want to have any more cold weather. But spring, the seasons are kind of button heads with each other, so it might be here today, gone tomorrow. Well, yeah, except for... Um they're talking that in some parts of Indiana uh, on Saturday we may get eight inches of snow. Crazy. Well, all I'd like to say is don't share the wealth. Keep it back there. I don't want it. We'll try. All right. Uh, Dave, I want to just ask you kind of an all-encompassing question about the, the Trump administration. Uh, I think it's easy for any talk show host, and I think it's way too easy for people that are supposed to just give the news, but everybody in all the liberal media is absolutely looking for any small chink in the armor, any small dent, any small uh, existence of rust or whatever within this administration so they can highlight it to the general public. I have never seen a presidency ever in my 70 years that is so highly scrutinized for negativity as this one. Would you agree? No, 100%. And, um, you know, the um, as some people call it the deep state, but then there's others, other things besides what the deep state truly is. Uh, other groups, as I've talked about before, with Soros and the SEIU and some other unions and uh, that that um, fundamentally want to bring Trump down so they can continue their path towards controlling this country. And now, that's what we're seeing, and it's it's going to get worse. And I, you know, like what happened in Austin, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if somehow this wasn't connected uh, to those people. Um, if, if eventually that came up, I'm not saying it is, but I wouldn't be surprised. I agree with you, and I we talked the first hour on my program about this Texas bombing, about how we all need to be so cognizant of what's going on around us. It can happen anywhere. I underline that word, it can happen anywhere. And people have got to be more aware of their circumstances because we do not live in a safe world today. No, we don't, and, um, you know... Um I think I said this on your show a long time ago, but uh, you remember after um, we won uh, World War One and Two, and then we uh, um, won the Cold War with the Soviet Union and uh, and all that, uh, and uh, of course Islam and uh, terrorists. Uh, you know their whole uh, indication is that uh, they can't beat us militarily, but they're going to bring us down from within. And I think that's what we're seeing. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you this, and again, this is kind of speculative because we haven't seen the net or end result of what's going to take place this weekend. But I have, I've talked about this a lot on my show, and I have grave concerns over the utilization of our young people as pawns for the left in this march against guns this weekend. And they're even going to have one of those marches in Boise, Idaho. I mean, this is a nationwide uh, deal. And I said earlier, I'm very concerned about what's going to happen, what they're going to try to promote, what the net result will be next week on Monday when the network news starts carrying all the residual stories. Oh, yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of these young people, well, two things. One, uh, they've been brainwashed by the, uh, their teachers and uh, uh, college professors and that uh, who, you know, the, um, 
from the left has uh, moved into these positions over the last 30 or 40 years and the unions uh, control and um, uh, they've been brainwashing the kids into this kind of stuff plus uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all just like uh, um, against uh, what the SEIU did against me and my company and my employees you know they hired people to come in from uh, other areas to lead these marches and be part of these things and uh, rally these people and get them all wound up and uh, I'm sure behind the scenes that's what's happened with uh, some of the, um, you know, the left, the Soros and the unions and other things. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Dave, when you were going through your problems with the SEIU and the thuggery and the, uh, oh, just absolute, uh, we're going to tear you apart, Mr. Beagle, we're going to absolutely destroy your business, did you ever fear for your health, your personal health, or your families, or your workers? I mean, was there a fear that was permeated? Oh, absolutely. Because um, we know they were in our neighborhood and uh, in our at, around our house during the day, knocking on the windows. Because our little dog, at the time, he was only a couple of years old. I mean, he looked out the window and never barked at anything until they started coming around. And we, are know, we know they were there because they even had little kids um, trick-or-treat in our neighborhood on Halloween and... Uh, as they got their candy, they handed flyers to our neighbors saying the buildings we cleaned were house of horrors and, um, you know, where people were abused and all that kind of stuff. And then they had union thugs driving up down the streets. And uh, that's what these people do. Uh, they don't know how to be successful in our free market uh, society without going out and selling themselves and doing the right things. It's going out and intimidating and misleading and brainwashing people. And that's what we're seeing with the, the gun control and other things because the Democrats are are very very concerned that they are in a death spiral um, because of the Trump election and uh, what's been going on, and with this election coming up in November, uh, it's going to get worse and worse. That's all all I can tell you. You know, when you had this happening and you said there was people absolutely trespassing on your property and peering in windows, I don't know what your family status was, the kids at home, the wife, everything else, but that must have been one of the most traumatic times of uh, of uh, worrying about whether some kook was really going to carry it a step further. Well, yeah, yeah it was. And, uh, you know, then our kids already graduated from college and moved on, but... Uh, and were working for us at the time, but uh, no, we were concerned about what was going on, and our neighbors even were. I mean, we we had neighbors like came down on Halloween one and said, "Dave, what is this?" And uh, I'd had to sit them down, talk to them, and explain to them what's going on. And um, uh, I was fortunate that uh, none of my neighbors gave me a hard time; they stood behind us. Did you ever, and I don't mean to pry into this, but I think a, a fear factor that has permeated all across the United States right now, did you ever call or stand by? I'll be right with you, I promise. But did you ever have a personal confrontation, nose-to-nose, toes-to-toes with these people to the point where you literally warned them they'd better get off your property right now and never come back? Did you ever have that? Well, we never caught them on our property. Um, we just know they were there because of um, the way our dog changed. And, I see. Uh, we had heard uh, incidents of people driving in the neighborhood and around our house and stuff like that. So I never got them on that. But, you know, I think uh, I probably told you and I mentioned in my book, one day I was downtown in Indianapolis and came out of a meeting, and they knew I was there somehow. And um, as soon as I walked out uh, the building on the streets of Indianapolis, uh, I had two of them go shoulder to shoulder with me and, um, you know, trying to intimidate me. I said, you better leave me alone and because um, uh, it's not going to be pretty yeah and um, they kind of backed off from me and they kept following me but uh, they weren't smart enough when i was going into the parking garage i made a turn one way they didn't see me in time and i got in the elevator and they never caught me <laughs> but uh, this is who they are yeah absolutely caller we have uh, you ready to go on the air your statement please go ahead yes a quick thought uh food for thought for them I'm just wondering now if they're going to uh, come together and march against the bombs. I'll hang up. You know, and really, Dave, that caller summed up the feelings and thoughts of a lot of people. We hear about the anti-gun marches. Oh, we've got to purge our society from all these evil guns and tell these uh, legal gun owners that they're going to lose everything. We've got to get rid of them. But what about the bombs? What about the knives? What about everything else that the evil will use in a society to perpetrate their means? Well... 
you have to understand these people are hypocritical. Uh, they they say one thing when they talk about something, and they say they could say just the opposite on something else at the same time. It's whatever fits their um, uh, needs at the time that they do, and uh, you know it's uh, that's what people have to understand about these people. And I've said this over and over. And don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do, and that will tell you more than anything about these people because they they are hypocrites. They'll say one thing and later on do exactly the opposite and say exactly the opposite. And uh, this is uh, what our people have to wake up to. These people uh, don't know how to be truthful and honest with the American people. You know, truthful and honest leads me back again to what's going on with the Mueller investigation. Now, I'm going to say this. I know you're friends with Mike Pence. You know the man personally, our vice president. But I'm going to say that this witch hunt by Robert Mueller and the investigatory team, I mean, going way, way back when uh, Trump and his businesses were building buildings in foreign countries and everything, way back before the man ever even thought about becoming a candidate for the presidency, you're going to find something. I dare say that they're going to open the closet and find something in Dave Bego's closet. I know they can possibly in Zeb Bell's closet. How far back legally and really accepting are they going to be of Donald Trump before they drop this harassment? It's. It, 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 I don't know. Because, but, again, you understand this is part of the deep state. And, um, you know, they're saying that uh, uh, when you look at the deep state, it's composed of the CIA and the... Uh, the FBI and, and other people uh, behind the scenes, and um, that um, they're going to continue to do these things because, uh, and this goes back um, um, to early in our country, um, where um, even some of our presidents, uh, as they got out, uh, wanted to change this country uh, behind the scenes, and this has been moving forward for a lot of years. And we're going to continue to see this because they don't like Trump's position on uh, standing up for uh, our Constitution and our free market society, our capitalistic society, and God and stuff like that. And that's not what they want to hear. Absolutely. And, you know, I almost chuckled. I almost broke into a grin the other night when I watched the stupidity and the arrogancy of Jeff Flake from Arizona come out and say, well, I'm still considering running for the presidency. I, I think I can do this better. And Come on. Here's a man, Donald Trump, and his administration, and I'm not going to say he can walk on water because we all have, uh, like I said, skeletons in our closet. Our economy is booming. Our economy is growing. Our national security is being addressed because our military is beating, being treated properly. We're seeing a resurgence of American ideals in this country. What in the world would some dimwit like Flake say that he could do a lot better? He's a failure as a senator and now he wants to throw his hat in the ring to be president? Well, it's, it, you come back to these things, and uh, it's interesting because these people, uh, they think they're smarter than the rest of us. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, they're narcissists and um, uh, they're egomaniacs, and, um, you know, uh, they, they're, they're going to do whatever they think uh, they want to do. And uh, uh, they think the rest of us should believe in that stuff. And, you know, I, I face the same thing when I... Uh, um, um, met with SEIU officials and debated them and that, and and even people that they hired to fight me, uh, you know, like some of the clergy people, in other words. But once you get them in a position where they have to debate you face to face, and uh, you can expose their lies and misinformation like Trump does to them, uh, then they 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 tend to uh, tuck their tails in and, and move on. Well, the news media needs to have a comeuppance like you just said. I mean, I would love to have the opportunity to visit face-to-face -face on the air with some of those blowhards at MSNBC or CNN. They are going unchallenged. They are going unchallenged on the allegations that they make and the way that they twist the news. When I was a young man growing up, and the same with you, Mr. Bego, the people that were on the news reported the news. They left their personal opinions opinions and their vendettas out of it and they were journalists that reported the news and we don't have that anymore no and, it's, and the problem is um, 
Zeb and I, and I expose this, uh, expose this in my book, is behind the scenes the media is being controlled. Uh, if you remember in my book, uh, Glenn Beck um, was uh, thrown out of Fox, and um, most 99% of Americans don't know why, and I, and I expose it in my book, The Devil at Our Doorstep, um, that he went after the SEIU just as I finished beating them and I was working on my book, and I actually happened to be in New York City uh, on Fox Business News and uh, waiting to get on the show, and he came through with his bags all packed, and I asked him, so what's going on? He says, I've been let go uh, because I went after the SEIU. And uh, um, the SEIU, what they did is they went after uh, Fox's advertisers, and um, Fox started losing revenue, so they uh, called Fox and said, look, if you want us to leave your advertisers alone, get rid of Beck. So they did. And uh, to this day... You know, when I talk to Fox or try to call Fox and send them an email, see if I can get back on their shows, they won't respond to me. And I'm sure when I was on, the SEIU called them and said the same thing. Don't have him on or we'll yeah. go after your advertisers. You know, I, this is what's going on, not just at Fox, but media across the country. Well, I've been there. I mean, literally, I think I've talked to you about this. That back prior to Obama becoming president in the campaign uh, part of 2007, uh, I criticized Obama heavily. But yet, at the same time, I was supporting another African American or Negro, and that was Condoleezza Rice. Well, the left and the Democratic Party here in the state of Idaho, evidently, they didn't have their brain plugged in for the day. They came after me with all their guns loaded, saying I was a racist and a bigot and everything else. You have to stand up to these people. You have to literally spit in their eye and prove what they are, liars and promoters of falsehoods. That's exactly right. We need more people stand up and uh, with backbone and uh, need more pay- people in the Republican Party and that to do that uh, if we're going to stop this stuff. And uh, so it's, it's uh, you know, and, and this deep state thing, according, I don't, I don't know if you knew this, according to Ship, you remember he was with mm-hmm. the CIA and he was mm-hmm. involved in these things. Um, the deep state is comprised of military, industrial complex, intelligence contra- contractors, defense contractors, MIC lobbyists, Wall Street, Federal Reserve, uh, IMF, World Bank, Treasury, foreign lobbyists, and central banks. And uh, he's not even getting into uh, uh, some of the left uh, uh, leftist unions and Soros and some of those. And uh, uh, America needs to wake up. But the question is... Will they? Uh, Every day, I'm blessed in this part of the country with my audience. They're very, very connected. Uh, They're very uh, vocal, and they they get things done. I'm worried about the American public in general because it's kind of like we're sponges. We just absorb. Yeah, well, we got to wake them up. And um, the the, uh, the comments I just told you came out of uh, an article that I was reading this morning that uh, most Americans believe the deep, deep state controls America and uh, not the elected leaders. And, uh, you know, that, that's scary. we got, we got to get Americans fighting back. Well, I totally agree with you. Anything else going on in your world, Bego's world? That's what we'll call this segment from now on, Bego's world. <laughs> well, I, I want to ask you if you know who Josh Bernstein is. Why do I know that name? I've heard that name. Help me. He's the guy that uh, he climbs mountains and he ah. he looks like he wears kind of a it looks like to me like kind of a cowboy Australian cowboy hat and uh, you know he's he's always uh, going out in the wilderness and uh, doing things and that and um, I belong to a group that uh, we're having a breakfast in May and he's going to be speaking at and I didn't know if you knew him or not but I thought I'd bring it up. Well then I'll try to fly back and attain the breakfast to uh, be there and uh just don't make it a Monday through a Thursday make it on a Friday I'll leave on Thursday afternoon so that you can buy me dinner on Thursday and I'll be there for the breakfast. <laughs> it's it's on a Friday morning at 7 a.m. Oh it is. <laughs> Basically he's an international explorer, photographer, author, diver, television host and um you need to look him up because you see the picture of him uh, he probably fits your uh, your mode. I will try to. Maybe I could get him on my program too. You might mention to him that uh, you know this lonely old cowboy out here in Idaho that would love to have him on the program and talk about some of his experiences, and uh, we'd have him on the show. 
Well, I won't be able to talk to him until he's here in May, So, because uh, uh, somebody else set this all up. All right. Well, if I get a chance, I'll let him know. I appreciate it. Dave Beagle, thank you so much. Good to have you on the program this morning, and uh, God bless. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thanks, and you too. Take all right. Care. Thank you. Good friend, Dave Beagle, back in Indianapolis, Indiana. A great businessman, and uh, always look forward to his insight. Uh, calls are welcome in a few minutes. I think that we have had a cancellation of our 930 guest, and I'm sweating bullets because I was told not more than an hour ago, yes, he would be here. And no, he is not. So I'm going to turn it over to you folks. You've bailed me out in the past, and I'm asking you to bring your buckets and bail me out again. So I'll get some commercials, and then we'll have an open forum for about a half an hour. Dog, God, I hate when this happens. Well, your guest can't be here at 930. Why not? He said he would be here an hour ago. Well, I don't know. Anyway, I want to remind everybody about our friends, and they are our friends, at Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with Joel Heward, his family, and the staff serving you. And death is a part of life. We've got to acknowledge that. And when it happens, we lose a member of our family. It's a very, very traumatic time. I understand that. It's happened in my family. I know it's probably happened in yours. And you need someone that's going to be there to help you with everything that needs to be done in a very short period of time. That's why I urge you to call Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert, Joel Heward, 436-5636. Always treating you with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. And Joel Heward also serving you at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Oh, my. Let's see what else have we got here real quick before we gallop into the next segment that we don't have a guest for, but hopefully you'll call. You've been really good the first hour. Call me back right now. Ark Animal Hospital. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn. They are and have been voted Minicash's best veterinary hospital many, many times. And, uh, oh, for your puppies. Don't forget your puppy dogs. Now's the time to get them vaccinated for that parvovirus. Ooh, that can be deadly. Make sure you get them over there. And also, they are a mixed animal practice, meaning big or small, they can take care of them all. And they love them all. Really nice people. Dr. Bill and the crew at Ark Animal Hospital in Habern. The number to call, 678-1177. They do have the warm hearts for the cold noses. Really, really good folks. And one last word, and then I'm going to turn it over to you. I want to remind you about our friend Jeff Bronson and the crew over at Lease Furniture Floors and More. Woo! They got in a new shipment of carpeting and luxury vinyl planks. I mean a big, that means really huge, selection. And uh, they say, come on in. And they've got all the sofas and the love seats and the recliners. Anything you're looking for to beautify your home or get comfy, they've got it right there at Lee's Furniture Floors and More. 459 Overland and Burley. You stop in and spruce up for springtime okay now it's your turn believe me it's your turn because we had john samirik scheduled and uh i don't know what happened to did you get anybody else the end he didn't bother to call us back okay uh anyway we're hopefully we can get him on at another time but i would really appreciate your calls and your thoughts right now at 436-2244-1-866-927-4587 Let me ask you this. Should our government force you to support and advocate for things you believe are harmful and dangerous? Let me ask that question again. Should our government force you, tell you, to support and advocate for things and items and whatever that you believe are harmful and dangerous. Well, they are. I had a full story sent to me yesterday, 
And in California, yeah, I'm talking about California again. Ay, 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 ay. They are trying to make, uh, hold on, caller, I'll be right there, I promise. They're trying to make pro-life clinics in California put up posters and advertisements in favor of abortion clinics like Planned Parenthood. This is absolutely insane. It's like a guy that loves to eat a great big beefsteak going out and being forced to advocate being a vegetarian. This is absolutely crazy. Caller, thank you for calling. You're on the air. Thanks much. Talk to me, caller. Okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, I can. I don't know where you were, but we couldn't find you. It's like in the Bible, the lost is found. Well, great. But yesterday I mentioned something to you about it, how lucky we are to be able to live in Teja County and in Idaho. Right. Because we spent the winter in Las Vegas, and these people are being taxed to death. Yeah. For instance, 10 cents a gallon tax on gasoline, which already has the federal and the state tax on it. Right, right. And they add 10 cents a gallon for that. It's for their law enforcement. Nothing goes to the highway or streets or anything like that. It's just strictly that. And then, now they've come up with, they've raised the insurance. Well, to go back to the beginning. Well, real fast, real fast. We can't go back? I said no, real fast, Keith, because I don't want to keep all the callers waiting. we got many others on the line. Go ahead. Okay. Nevada is one of the top ten states for high insurance rates. Yes. And so on top of all that, they've came out with a new ruling that you have to have uninsured motorists. Yeah. Well, that's been the law for some time. Yeah. Now they've figured out a way to enforce it by when you go to register your car, they make sure you have it, and it costs Forty-five dollars a month extra. Wow, a month? Any other charges? Holy moly! You know the American public. Uh, we need another Boston Tea Party in the form of saying to our government, "Hey, we hired you to represent us, not to take us into uh, financial oblivion." Uh, you know, I'm going to do some research on this, Keith, and I'm going to talk about that more uh, in the upcoming programs about the taxation and everything and what's imposed on you in the state of Nevada. I've heard about that, and I want to do more research. Thank you, and. And we'll okay. see you and Nancy tomorrow one, at Lunch one Bunch. One more thing that I wanted to add to that, Zeb, is that, uh, I, doggone, I lost my train of thought, but uh, is the fact that Nevada has got all these laws and everything, and you have to abide by them, even if you don't live there. But the one that really gets my goat is the fact if you buy a new car there, and this is just an average that I'm telling you about, but to get you, you have your sales tax, which is probably 8% there, I think. And then you have your registration fee. To drive away in a new car in Nevada will cost you $800. Wow. Wow. Hey, send me some of that information. I'd like to have that so we can do a segment on that. Thanks, Keith. I appreciate it. God bless you, man. Thanks. $800. Woo! That's uh, still a lot of money. Caller number two, you're on the air. I appreciate your patience. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning, Deb. Did I hear you right? The government is asking people in California to finance the supporting of committing murder. No, 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 you did not hear me right. And I, I, the words I used are these. They are making sure that they're trying to force people at 
pro-life clinics to also put up the advocacy advertising of saying, oh, and by the way, there's an abortion clinic down the road. You can have that as a consideration also. And, and that's why I use the analogy, why, if you're a meat eater, should you be supporting vegetarianism? I mean, this is insane that they're going con- to basically contract what you can and can't say with free speech and our First Amendment. This is insane. Well, to me, there is no difference at all, zero, zero, between murder and abortion. I agree. You take a gun and shoot somebody, it's way less painful than taking a pair of ice grips and tearing the body apart. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I, I will in no way ever, ever, ever go along with supporting abortion in any way. It's absolutely appalling to me that anybody would even consider such a horrible thing. It's murder. Anyway, I'll get out of the way. May you have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless. God bless you, Jerry. I appreciate it. You know, I just couldn't believe this. I ended up with this great big huge story uh, that came to me in regards to what they're trying to do down in California. And the headline was uh, as follows. California thinks it can force pro-life clinics to talk about abortion. And they're going to go all the way to the Supreme Court. And uh, they're trying to say that if you're going to have a pro-life clinic in California, that you also have to provide advertising for abortion clinics. You have to hang those in your business. That's insane. I mean, then they're going to not stop and say that, uh, like I mentioned a moment ago, that if somebody's on uh, television advocating uh, for the beef industry, oh, by the way, uh, we also want you to be a vegetarian. I mean, it's kind of like slapping each side of your face. It's ridiculous that the government and the left in this country, in this country, is trying to manipulate and control and curtail our free speech. Give me a call, please, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. You know, abortion is uh, something that I just absolutely, I will stand against always on this program, like Jerry mentioned a moment ago. And uh, there's a group in California called Students for Life, a great group of pro-life students. And they're an organization that's known all across the United States. But now the left is after them, after them, and they're denying them a voice on campus. They're denying them permission to have pro-life events, and they're forcing them. Listen to this. They're forcing them to hang signs when they have an event that says this is a trigger warning that they might offend liberal students. Unbelievable. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. How are we doing today? I am fantastic, Bert. Thank you for your call. Go ahead, please. Hey, I just wanted to mention that I'm going to Boise today, and we got water meetings. Uh, looks like we've got a, a good water thing, and maybe uh, sometime when you got a spot in the next week or two, uh, we'll talk about it. Well, let me ask you this, Bert. I'm glad you called. That was very nice of you. At these water meetings, basically what takes place, I'm sure it's not just where everybody shakes hands and talks about the latest March Madness basketball game, but what really happens? Well, Zeph, uh, we've got a pretty full agenda on uh, tomorrow. We have a work session tomorrow uh, reviewing the things. We've got some uh, water contracts that we're working on for up in the Lamb High for solve some of the fish problems up there. And then uh, we've got some uh, other issues up in uh, on the Priest Lake, and we'll be discussing those issues. Uh, and uh, and then on uh, Friday uh, we have our uh, regular board meeting where we approve some of those contracts we'd have, uh, and, and and some of the things that the legislatures put in that we need to be brought up to date on how it affects the water issues. Bert, with the moisture that we incurred since you and I talked the last time on the radio about the water conditions here in the state of Idaho, uh, what is it 
done to change? I mean, are we more on the positive side than we were? What's the percentage of increase? That, uh, the people I've talked to up at Island Park says that uh, some of those metal and stuff out there not uh, has now got uh, five to six foot of snow on them. And uh, six weeks ago, they didn't have a foot. And, and so we, in their eastern part of the state, we picked up pretty well. Uh, that's the other thing we'll learn here tomorrow or the next day, that uh, what the Bureau intends to do with uh, the water that uh, the reservoirs are full, they're going to have to start releasing it. Okay. So that's well, please, when you come back from the meeting, feel free to call me and we'll get you on the air. But before you leave, I want to ask you this. Uh, you were a representative of our great state of Idaho for a long time, and you saw many, many things happen in politics on a nationwide level and also here in the state of Idaho. What do you think is the mood right now, not only here in Idaho, but across the United States, that has changed so drastically from when you were a state representative? Well, Zeb, uh, I probably wouldn't be able to serve now because uh, I'd get to mess with somebody. But, uh, Zeb, it's, uh, everything is so contentious anymore. Uh, I, I see people uh, bad-mouthing Trump because he called... Uh, uh, the Soviet president and congratulated him. Nobody said anything when Obama did it. Yeah. Nobody complained about that being uh, an American, and yet they come out with these same kind of things. This is his own same party that's bad mouthing him. Yes. Uh, I, I just guess I get discouraged about some of those things. Yeah, Bert, with your experience uh, of being a representative and having to talk with and get along with the other side so that hopefully you can come up with a solution, what would you say that America in general needs to do right now? Not next week, not next month, not next year, but right now to save the moral and ethical value of this country? Uh. Deb, I can't answer that question because I don't know what the answer is. It goes back to that same thing. We've, we've degenerated our things. We don't know our neighbors. We don't know anything about them. We, we just have come into a cocoon almost in our own lives that we don't know. Now, some of that will change if people went to church like you do uh, because you had developed those relationships. We have to think more about other people than we think about ourselves. I absolutely. That fit me. I don't want any part of it. Absolutely. And I hear that every day for people. Yeah. And why should I care about that? It doesn't affect me. You better care about it. Yeah. You know, at the end of my program, and I want to ask this of you, at the end of this program, every day when I wrap up the show, I use the phrase, the way things were are the way things ought to be. I have taken a lot of criticism over that. A lot of people have sent me nasty emails. A lot of people have called me and criticized me for saying that. But honestly, with the moral value, the family values, and the government values of the past, I do think the way things were are the way things ought to be. What are your thoughts? Well, Zeb, I could concur on that. Now, I guess with my family, I don't particularly want to things to be the way they were. I, I grew up going to school, but before I could go to school, I had to out uh, six uh, head of cows by hand. And all through high school, we didn't get a milking machine until we got out of high school. So some of those, so you know, but, but it, we all, the neighborhood all worked together to do this. Uh, and and you're, you're exactly right, our government. Now, the news, I blame part of it on the news media. Yes, yes. Is that all yes. they want to do is criticize, and it doesn't matter which party we want to criticize. Yep. Come up with a solution if you, gotta, if you don't like the way things are. Amen. There's a the better idea. Amen. I am so glad you called, and I wish you the best, and please let us know the end result of that water meeting. God bless you and your lovely wife, Elaine, and thanks, Bert. I appreciate it. Well, Deb, uh, 
I want you to know how much that I appreciate the people that listen to your program as well as you. Well, thank you. And, Th- I'm, not, and I'm not running for office. Okay. <laughs> All right, my dear friend, drive carefully. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bert Stevenson, uh, representative for the state of Idaho and a dear, dear friend. Thank you very much. I've got to get a weather forecast on here really, really quick. And then I'll take some more of your calls. And uh, weather brought to us this hour by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. You know, this is a busy, busy time of the year for them. I mean, they're burning the midnight oil. You can bet on that providing accounting services to the minicash area and they have for well over 50 years the best of tax return preparation tax planning and of course bookkeeping services financial statement preparation retirement planning the list goes on and on from the professionals phillips oaks goodwin crane and company we're going to have Leiden on the program tomorrow Leiden crane as a matter of fact and he's going to be part of our business salute i urge you to get a hold of them today with offices in burley and Rupert Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. Right now, here's the weather. Looks like we have a storm system that's rolling into the valley and could stick around for the next couple of days. Here's your weather forecast for Seventh Ranch. Rain showers likely mostly before noon. Cloudy skies looking at a high of 52. Winds out of the east right around 8 miles an hour. Be coming out of the southwest by this afternoon and could gust as high as 20 miles an hour. For tonight, 50% chance of showers in the forecast, mostly after midnight, possible snow showers in the higher elevations. Mostly cloudy skies with a low of 42. Tomorrow, 80% chance of rain showers in the forecast, high of 56. Windy as well, gusts as high as 25 miles an hour. For Friday, we do have a very slight chance of sunshine. Could see a sliver of it with a high of 52. And then more clouds could be rolling in for Friday night with a low of 33. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 20% chance of showers in the forecast, mostly cloudy skies. That is your weather for Zebedee. Oh, man. It sounds like we may see some unsettled weather for a while. But hark, hark. It's going to get better, I promise. Weather brought to you by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. And they are very, very happy to answer any and all of your questions. They are there to serve you, as they have been for many, many years. Don't forget two locations, Burley and Rupert. Call them. Find out more. Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. Right now, caller, good morning. You're on the air. You know, uh, when Bert called in about the water, you know, I noticed uh, quite a while back that Murtaugh Lake was full and uh, the the main line canal coming out of it was full. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that they are in recharge mode. And, uh, you know, just recharge locations and, you know, how that's all designed and done is something that I would like to go see. Because, you know, uh, it's so vitally important what we do with our water here in the state of Idaho. Right. And I I just want the people to know, and maybe you do or don't know this, but we are so far ahead of the rest of the West when it comes to water management, ground and surface, Mm -hmm. that if you study it, you will realize that the, the, we have a very responsible government, state government here. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the state of California is trying to pattern themselves after us with ground and surface, and they are so sh- screwed up <laughs> because they have to deal with environmental insanity. Yes. You see, at least here in Idaho, it's still normal. You can talk to an elected representative, and you can actually get some logic out of the guy. Down there, it's insanity. You know, what you... you Go ahead. Well, what you said, though, is really the truth about water issues and water, our lifeblood in the state of Idaho. I don't care if they're running a store that sells guppies and goldfish. I don't care if they've got an implement dealership. Water is our lifeblood right here in this state. And i got to confess to you, Randy, you being a farmer in the past, you have forgotten more about water and water issues than I'll ever know. And I always look up to people like you and, of course, uh, my dear friend, Representative Bert 
Stevenson and others that know about water, and uh, I can learn so much from them. Well, what is so amazing, in the beginning of all this recharge, because I wonder where we are, because every year we want to recharge at 250,000 acre feet. And remember this, always remember this, everybody, that the Bureau of Reclamation, the environmentalists, force us to run 250,000 acre feet. 250,000 acres, a foot deep, they make us waste that, run it to the ocean to cool the snake and the Columbia yeah. for the fish. Yep. And there isn't any evidence that it's actually done any good. But I'll tell you what, if we were, if we had a dam that we could, I mean, a, a reservoir that we were putting 250,000 acre feet in every year, would that not be smarter than running it to the ocean? Well, I, the environmentalists say that the ocean is rising. I have never... <laughs> Randy, I have never honestly, and I've read a lot of stories about this and a lot of news reports, etc. I cannot understand, and I'm not saying I know all about everything because that would be a lie. But I do not understand how that fish flush, as they call it, does anybody any good except hurting farmers and ranchers in the state of Idaho. I, I don't see any benefit to it. There is no benefit other than... This is what the deep state environmental lobby in 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 the in our federal government is so you know vicious that you cannot even believe what nasty and they don't care about the fish they don't care about the environment we always know it just wants to control things or in some respects destroy the economy but you understand that if we were to save 250,000 acre feet plus the 250,000 acre feet we want to recharge. That would be 500,000 acre feet that we could run down into the aquifer. Nobody knows how big the aquifer is. And, and, and to, can you imagine how beneficial that would be to our state? Absolutely. In, in California, and I know i got to go, I've said plenty, but in California the mismanagement of the water is so bad that some of the most fertile, you know, ground where you've been down there numerous times yep. in the Central Valley yep. is not being irrigated yep. because they do not have the water. Because last year when they had a chance to save water, they couldn't decide whether or not they want to try to build a dam or, you know, they can't even get a permit to build these dams. Some of these dams have been on the permit table for 10 years. That's right. And, and, and you see, they, they, they can't. They can't decide whether or not they're going or coming down there. And, see, these people are destroying the West, they're destroying California, and they're moving to Idaho. Oh, goody. Randy, thank you. That was a great summation. I appreciate it, my dear friend. Thank you. Thank you. That was good, interesting, and true. I mean, uh, boy, (laughs) when we start being dictated to... By the likes of California and their absolutely off-the-wall ping-pong ball ideas, we're really in trouble. Don't forget Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. Yes, 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 this is the place to go. Walk in the showroom and look at all the four-wheelers and the side-by-sides. Look at all the accessories they have in the accessory department. And find out, of course, if you already have four-wheelers and they need to be serviced to get ready to rock and roll and ride this spring, you better get over there and see Tyson and the crew and the best doggone service department around. It's all there at Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24, between Rupert and the world. This is where the fun is sold. Also want to remind you quickly, also in that same neck of the woods or part of the desert, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Number to call, 436-4424. Life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits. People that know, people that care, people that want to serve you. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. That number again, 436-4424. Thank you for bailing me out. My guest didn't show this half hour. Hmm, makes me frosted. And uh, thank you for bailing me out and all your great calls. Appreciate it. And we're going to head to the news right now from CBS. I'll be back in 7. (laughs) 
Oh, good morning and welcome back. Hour number three, Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley. Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with a great big spring tire sale going on right now. Along with some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Hello, Nick Greenwell and the crew at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Hey, happy Easter is right around the corner and happy Easter. Easter wishes from Mad River Laser at 502 East Street in Rupert, right on the square. Oh, my goodness, they're having a great big spring blowout, and they've got all kinds of great, great buys in their gift shop. The entire gift shop is on sale. I urge you to get over and see my friends. Absolutely the best when it comes to embroidery, swag, screen printing, everything at Mad River Laser, 502 East Street in Rupert. And also the Book Plaza at 222 West 11th Street. And Burley. Oh, they've got all the precious moments, figurines, thousands upon thousands of books, three great big floors, and uh, many other great gifts for Easter. Stop over and see them today. The Book Plaza at 222 West 11th Street in Burley. Wishing you and your family a very happy Easter. Right now, we're, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to try to get my voice back. Right now, we're going to go back to the phone line, and our guest for this hour has been on the program many, many times in the past. He is the publisher of Talk40.com, and we say a good morning to Brian Crabtree. Sir, how are you? Doing well. Good morning to you. You know, Brian, you've been on the show many times, and you've always been a straight shooter. I mean, uh, you tell it like it is. And I'm just going to start our conversation off by saying I am sick and tired of a witch hunt that is doing nothing up but mixing up a different brew every day to go after the Trump administration with possible collusion. And, oh, boy, he fired Andrew McCabe. We've got to go after him and find out the ulterior motives. Oh, my goodness. This is so pathetic. Pathetically non clandestine, I'm fed up with it. Do I share the same feelings as most Americans? I, I think you do. I, I think even uh, moderate liberals are, are suffering from Trump fatigue and not necessarily Trump as president, but Trump coverage. Um, uh, you know, the Stormy Daniels story was the number one focus yesterday evening in the other, uh, I'll use Hillary's words, bimbo eruption of the latest that to deal with the Trump organization prior to him being the president. Literally from 5.30 until 9.30, when I ran my media monitor on CNN, they did not mention the hero, school guard, resource officer who shot and neutralized the school shooter in Maryland yesterday, did not mention him one time on CNN in favor of Stormy Daniels and a bimbo eruption about Trump that nobody cares about. They didn't bring it up because Trump's narrative and the conservative narrative that armed guards with guns at schools is the way is the way to solve the school shooting problem. That's an example of just how corrupted it is. I touched a nerve this morning on Atlanta radio uh, when I asked the question, you know, very honestly, is it over? Uh, are we a country in decline? Not culture. That's pretty obvious. Are we a country in decline? We have a single caller of many that were attempting to argue with that point. In fact, they were doubling down. God's lost the favor of the country. We're, we're not focused on our faith anymore. I mean, there's all kinds of things that became the subject matter of the conversation. And ultimately, the only takeaway I can give you that's positive, if we conservatives, the silent majority, would just start standing up and becoming as loud as the left, we'd drown them out and literally take the country back because it is off the rails. I absolutely, you, you said basically, and I'm not trying to feather your nest, but I said everything you said just now is exactly my mantra that I've had uh, over the last many months on this program. You know, I want to talk just briefly about that resource officer at that Maryland school. You brought up an excellent point that I have wondered about, I've asked questions about, I'm not getting anywhere. Why weren't there stories provided? Why wasn't there an honor given by the media for this man to put his life in jeopardy, put his life in the shooter's range, and yet he took out this uh, young man, and he saved lives, and he saved devastating injuries. And nobody, nobody is giving him any accolades whatsoever. 
Well, there's a, cr- a phrase that a friend of mine I would actually give credit to. It's a, I, 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 here in Atlanta has come up with called the activist media. And I've kind of taken it and run with it in some of my writing and a book I'm working on now. And it's activist media. The media is no longer journalistic. It's activist. It's political. And that's the, it's a, well, Brian, who you're not telling us anything we don't know. Uh, let me go deeper than that. The media is about forging a narrative and continuing it. Uh, whether it's conservative interest or um, uh, liberal interest. Uh, obviously, 90% of the media is liberal. And let me go one step further. W- what happens is if the story fits the narrative then uh, that, that I believe in and peddling, then I'm going to go double down on the story. Not me, but that's kind of how they think. There's very few of us who want the truth to come out and just let it, the facts fall where it, where it may. And that's conservative or liberal. just happens to be far more people that are liberal that are, that are forging that narrative. So you have to fight lies with lies. And that's become the toxicity of what's happening, especially in cable news. And I'm not pinning anybody specifically but CNN. But the overall digital and cable and mainstream media, if you've got a conservative faction in there, they're just fighting the lies with the lies. Because you can't fight lies with facts because lies are far more believable because they fit a narrative we already want to hear. So you have to find something even more polarizing to trump what's already polarizing. And that, and I, no pun intended there with the word Trump. It's, it's really disgusting to the point I don't believe anything anymore. I'll tell you this, on the, back to the Mueller investigation, which is, all of these kind of blend together in, in terms of theme. It's about ignoring reality. We don't want to share the heroism of this Maryland school shooter, just like we don't want to just let this process play out with Trump and the Mueller investigation, let the facts fall where they may. It almost causes Mueller to have to come up with something or else he'll be slaughtered at the stake. So I'm not giving him a pass here, but I would love the American people, and especially the media who's fanning the flames, to just let Mueller finish the investigation and stop pontificating on stuff they don't know anything about, because you don't have the classified data. And the media doesn't have it either, especially now that the main leaker in the FBI, Andrew McCabe, has been fired. It was said the other morning, as a matter of fact, on Fox News by Judge Andrew Napolitano when asked how much longer he thought this uh, investigatory means and methods of uh, Mueller might go on. He said easily, easily through 2019 and very possibly leading up to the election. Our taxpayer dollars are going to be going further in the rat hole for at least another couple of years, according to Judge Napolitano. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I I don't. uh, To be honest, I, I like Judge Napolitano, but I find that a lot of times you have to back down what he says a notch or two to find reality. So if he's saying 2019... We're probably looking at the end of the year. Um, now, I wouldn't want to say I can't imagine it going into 2019. God knows I can imagine it going all the way through 2020. But I think by the end of the year it'll be wrapped up. I, I do think there are some legitimate findings that are going to come out. I, I think with this latest story about uh, Analytica, Cambridge Analytica, and the Facebook mining, the 50,000, there's the Mercer family very close to Trump. The Mercers were big behind Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon was directed by the Mercers to come into the campaign. Mercer was a former vice president of Cambridge Analytica. Uh, you've got Paul Manafort with some questionable, back, questionable background. Before he was indicted, I suspect that he was a shady character. I think Trump is completely detached from knowledge of any of those goings on. I think Trump's just a guy that kind of went out and said what he thought to the American people transparently and won the election by being real and not being a typical politician in the face of one of the worst in our country as they called it, crooked Hillary Clinton. But I think people like Bannon, people like Carter Page, who've all been subject matter of these investigations, and Paul Manafort and Rick Gates, all associated with the Trump campaign, perhaps did do some illegal things. I'm having a hard time shaking that. I do not believe Trump knew anything about it. That's just my take. And so if that comes out and we find out that these people were putting their thumb on the scale in some way, which is really just cheating in terms of marketing um, and breaking campaign laws, then that ought to come out. The American people ought to know it. But I don't think that that's worth what we've seen from the narrative. I think that's the worst of it. And most people that are Trump supporters are still going to be Trump supporters, and the leftists are going to turn that into the holy grail of corruption. 
and they're going to ignore looking in the mirror at their very own people like Hillary Clinton in doing so. So I, mean, I think that's really the truth. But what do I know? Because I'm doing what I say we shouldn't be doing. Let's let the facts come out and then deal with it. Well, and then I would say, you know, and I agree with everything you said, but then as a person that's a conservative, have been all my life, I would say, wait a minute, we're spending all this time and effort in an administration that basically we put in office, we being the conservatives, to help rearrange America the way it should be with national security, a better economy, etc. And we're wasting all this time and effort on a uh, investigatory means that hasn't shown anything yet, whereupon I would look over my left shoulder and I would say, why didn't they investigate the Clinton Foundation? Why didn't they investigate the Hillary emails? Why didn't they investigate Benghazi a lot more than they did? Why are they doing all of this for a conservative administration, the Trump administration? Well, that's a very excellent observation and question and point at the same time. Very, very on on point. Um, uh, and you may hear that in the answer I've already given you, that I don't mind that Mueller completes his investigation. I don't really want to see him fired. We've gone too far, spent too much. Let's see what he comes up with, and let's let the facts fall where they may. And just because he has an opinion doesn't mean it's true. He's a prosecutor. Lots of prosecutors make allegations and don't prove their case, and it gets overturned. Let's let that process of justice set itself out. It's still pretty reliable once you get to the courtroom that the facts come out and the truth prevails. It's bloody and it's messy. But you've made the point that, that I didn't make prior to that, which is if they would just do the same with Hillary Clinton, Andrew McCabe, and Jim Comey, people like them, the better-than-thou, self-righteous, sanctimonious crowd, and actually point out that they've done perhaps far worse or just as bad as Trump's been accused, if they would put as much vigor into those prosecutions and investigations, then I don't think this would be so polarized. We would say, okay, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Let's let them all get investigated. That's the cost of being shady. That's the cost of being a little bit underhanded. But at the end of the day, I'm pretty convinced. I'm well-versed on this, deeply involved, especially when you talk about Facebook mining and analytics. I'm an expert in that stuff for many different reasons. What you have is that the Trump campaign and Trump support out-marketed the Hillary Clinton campaign. Right. Case closed. That's right. it. There's nothing there. Maybe there was some money in proprietary it, it, it stuff going on with some of the PACs and all of that, but I don't think Trump had anything to do with it. There's no evidence that existed. Absolutely. I really appreciate that opinion. We have a caller with a question. Go ahead, caller, quickly, please. Yes. You know, I've been very concerned about Jeff Sessions and his either it's, he's, he's in over his head, which I don't really believe or his hesitancy as to, you know, lay down the law and, and, and get another special prosecutor. And what is the deal with this guy? I'll hang up. Uh, good question. Go ahead, Brian, if you would please respond to the caller. Jeff Sessions is a typical guy who's been a career politician in Washington who seems like a pretty nice guy, probably in his heart of hearts, came with a pure heart and attitude to D.C., I wouldn't say got corrupted by it, but got distorted by it. His purpose and his cause got lost, and he's pretty useless. I mean, let's just face it. A, a lot of career bureaucrats, well, most of them, if you're going to spend a lifetime in Washington in business, you're probably what Trump would call a loser. People who are capable of doing exceptionally well in business, which means using good, sound judgment, logic, capability, and execution skills, are not possibly able to serve in government bureaucratic roles of politics or the federal government employee system for very long because they're going to go to the private sector where they can be compensated and make a bigger difference. You just can't do that in government. So we end up with a bunch of losers who stay in the government system who basically mess up our government, spend too much, waste too much, and corrupt the system because they're ineffective at a lot of what they do. Unfortunately, as good of a guy as Jeff Sessions strikes me as he is, he is ineffective, and the problem in firing him is that Trump literally could end up in a worse situation, especially McCabe could have ended up being the replacement, inter an interim replacement for Sessions had uh, he fired Sessions. So it's, it's difficult politically for Trump to, uh, even if I were advising him, and I'm a big Trump supporter, the way he goes about tweeting and his bombast and all of that, I think that stuff works. In fact, I'm writing a book outweighing all of that right now and even in that i would still advise trump to keep 
concessions for now because politically firing him would be so toxic he would be consumed by that for the next three months. And there might be even enough stupid Republicans to try to forge an impeachment hearing on it for obstruction of justice. Absolutely. Brian, I'm going to jump off the rails here a little bit, and I'm going to ask you about another subject that we didn't pre-talk about or anything on your sheets that were sent to me, but I want to get your opinion as to what may happen over the course of the next couple of days with the proposed anti-gun marches going on across the United States. One is almost in my backyard up at the state capitol in Boise, Idaho. What are your thoughts about this, and what do you think about the financing of all these marches by the extreme? left basically to have a gun control issue well i think you know it's a battle that's really very toxic for a country it strips away our rights so let's just go ahead and give it to them let's see that point let's get rid of everything that's used in the commission of the crimes that are occurring that are killing people in america that means we need to outlaw boxes because obviously you can use a cardboard box to blow people up in Texas, let's get rid of vehicles. By the way, let's get rid of cell phones until you're at least 18 years old because 11 teenagers die every single day texting while driving in America. Let that number sink in. That's a school shooting, a mass shooting every day because teenagers text and drive dead as a doorknob. So, uh, yeah, if we want to protest and take away the guns, let's go ahead and do that. Let's take away everything that's killing in mass in our country, and then we'll be fine. We won't have anything to do, nothing to drive, no productivity. We won't have much of an economy left, but we'll be safe, won't we? Uh, until we're ro- robbing and looting in the streets with the weapons that people have confiscated and gotten illegally, that'll be all the criminals. Uh, this is how stupid it is. The whole narrative that I just outlaid is how stupid this argument is. And I go back to my point of CNN yesterday. The minute they found out that that shooter in that Maryland school was neutralized by an armed guard, not a public resource officer, as the liberals call it, an armed guard, guy with a gun, they stopped covering it. I mean, it's just mind-boggling to look at how the coverage stopped the minute that news came out on CNN to where it evaporated. And mark my words, if the Austin bomber turns out to be a Bernie liberal, like the shooter did up in D.C. at the ballpark, this story will evaporate just as fast off of the media. I think we ignore the marches, and if the kids are missing school, they're suspended. And if it's my kids, I'm going to bring out the old corporal punishment. Get your butt back in school, or I'm going to beat it. You know, Brian, give us a little background on yourself. You've been on the program before. You're the publisher of Talk40.com and a contributor to many, many other dot-coms, if you will. Uh, what about you, your past, your history? What do you want to do in the future? I mean, you're very well-versed in what's happening in politics today. You know, what drives me in the media, because I had a, a very successful real estate career, to, to some extent still do in the, in the world of investment, what drives me is I see a country that's falling apart. And one of the things that I was attracted to about Trump and elated in his run is that he's a businessman who understands having dealt with politicians all of his life to get big deals done, big skyscrapers in a very liberal city, just how toxic it is when you mix smart, meaningful business with government and how much it costs jobs and productivity and how much we're killing ourselves. I mean, that was his ultimate message in the campaign, and we need more voices in media. So wherever that takes me, I'm a voice that seems to understand the consequences uh, of, of what government and losers in government do to ultimately the viability of our country. And the people getting hurt the most aren't people like me. I'm not in this because I'm getting hurt. I can make more money from the chaos and the disruption and the economic decline than I can ever make in a booming economy. I just think that it's a better place to live when everyone around us, even the least educated and the poorest with the least skills, have more upward mobility because the government gets the hell out of the way. And so if I can contribute in media to that message and to that enlightenment, that's what I'm 
here to do. That's what my purpose is at this point in life. You bring up a really good point, and I'll end it on this by this question. You know, you talk about the media. We talk about younger people getting involved in this occupation of the media and learning to ask questions and really delve into different issues. I think, and I will say this, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, right now there is a dire need for people that really want to get answers and know how to ask questions. I think the media is suffering from a lack of good quality quality people becoming involved. Would you agree? Yeah, well, the media does it. I mean, I'm in the media, and I, 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 by being involved, and even in some of the conservative blogs, there's one that you may notice has dropped, and I won't mention their name, that's dropped off of my resume, because I told my publicist that I won't use the word on the air that I used uh, in the email to drop that blank off of my list of, of, of uh, uh, or resume of, of writing places, because they are basically a Trump-hating conservative even in the conservative media world, you have people that have never made a payroll, that have never actually had to, to struggle in the sense of keeping the doors open to their business, who don't understand human resources, employment, the problems your employees bring to you as a business owner, small business owner, that you've got to help them with to keep their mind focused on their job. You can't just be the callous, mean, awful conservative that they paint us all to be and be successful in business. You've got to be a human being and a family man you got to care about the people that make your business work, and they never cover us correctly because they don't know what the hell they're talking about, and it is sad that they're polluting our airwaves with that vomit every day on both sides of the media aisle. The unfortunate nature is that, at least on the conservative side, it better aligns with what you and me and your audience may think, even if it's still somewhat pollution. Absolutely. Brian Crabtree, you're always welcome here, publisher of Talk40.com. God bless you, my dear friend. Come back soon. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you very much. I enjoy having him on the air. He's a straight shooter and tells it like it is. Brian Crabtree, thank you very much. Oh, my. I want to remind you, too. Let's see. I've got a couple of things I've got to say here quickly. Uh, Irvana. Nirvana is defined as the ultimate level of comfort you'll achieve with the presence of new Lennox home comfort systems. That's right. When you buy a new Lennox system at Ramsey Heating and Electric, you can get up to $1,700 in rebates. Hmm. Nirvana is just another way to make you feel better. So call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459 or visit them at RamseysOnline.com. Hey, there's going to be another big sale coming. Coming up on this Saturday, and it's put on by the Bennett Boys Auction Service, Joe Bennett and the crew. It's going to be at the Bag End Farms Auction, 11 a.m. Saturday, this coming Saturday, the 24th, located Buell, Idaho, 1672 East, 4300 North. Look for all the sales signs for the Bennett Boys Auction Service. They're going to have tractors and trailers and all kinds of farm equipment, miscellaneous equipment, lots and lots of planters and corrugators for your farming season. All of this at the sale coming up this Saturday at Baggin Farms Auction over in Buell. Put on by the Bennett Boys Auction Service. And that's Joe Bennett and the crew. The Bennett Boys. No sale too big. No sale too small. The Bennett Boys sell them all. Right now we're going to send this back over to our main studios and we will come back with our next guest in about three minutes. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. And a good, good morning to you. Wednesday, March 21st. We're into the third hour. And a quick reminder, don't forget we've got Lunch Bunch tomorrow at 1130 at America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant. Don't forget that. Right now... We are going to talk to a gentleman that is the uh, author of the best-selling book called, listen to this, 925 Ideas to Help You Save Money, Get Out of Debt, and Retire a Millionaire So You Can Leave Your Mark on the World. Woo! And good morning to Devin Thorpe. How are you, sir? 
Great. Good morning, Zeb. Thanks for having me on the show. It's an honor. Well, it is a real honor and pleasure to have you on the air. And i got to admit that in the time remaining, I only have time for 924 of those ways. So I guess we better get going. <laughs> uh, by the way, I noticed uh, I noticed on your telephone number that you are just basically a neighbor to the south of us. You're from Utah. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. In fact, uh, I was up in... Uh, Boise just a couple of weeks ago, so I drove through your neck of the woods. Well, you should have stopped in, and I would have allowed you to take me to breakfast or something. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been an honor. Well, I tell you what, it's Sorry, nice... Yeah. It's nice to have you on the program, Devin, and I guess the easiest way to start this is what propelled you to get all the information and all the knowledge from your book, for your book, so that you could tell others how to save money? What happened in your life that you were uh, moved to write this book? Well, it, it came down to uh, this uh, observation I'd made that figuring out personal finance was difficult, even for me as a, an MBA. I got an MBA at Cornell, and, you know, I kind of thought I knew what was going on, and figuring out personal finance is difficult. And, and so I, that was the first realization. The second realization was that uh, I was not the only one who was struggling to figure this out, that a lot of people were simply ignoring uh, or failing to appreciate all the challenges, and I just felt like I could help. So... Um, I've actually written several books on personal finance, but this one, the 925 book, uh, actually got some traction, and, and uh, you know, over a million people have read it. It's really uh, an amazing, you know, very rewarding uh, personally uh, uh, to see the success of that book. Well, Devin, let me ask you this: I have made, <clears throat> excuse me, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life financially, a lot of very serious mistakes that have cost me money for my retirement future. And hindsight, you've got to treat that as water under the bridge. But what is, in your opinion, one of the biggest mistakes that people make with money? Well, um, there, there are two I would highlight. One is, uh, and my parents <laughs> embody this, right? They like to move. So they're, they're constantly buying and selling homes. And every time you do that, you lose about 10% of the value of a home. Hmm. Well, if you do that every five years or every three years, uh, there's no way you're ever going to get the benefit of that long-term inflation that creates a real uh, retirement benefit uh, in the value of your home. So that's number one. Number two is cars. Oh, so many of us drive our retirement uh, while we're working and then don't have a retirement. Uh, You know, uh, for everybody, the the situation is different, but for driving a less expensive car for longer periods of time has a dramatic effect. It's as big as the house issue uh, on your budget. So those are the two things that I really focus on. because neither of those decisions impacts where I eat dinner tonight or whether I can go see a movie this weekend. Uh, it, it doesn't impact my daily life, my routine. I can feel rich even while I'm being very frugal by not moving too often and driving a less expensive car for a longer period of time. Okay. Now, Devin, let me ask you this question. Today, looking at today's generation, the millennials, or maybe a tad older, I say this, and tell me if I'm wrong, please. I say that they do not know how to manage their money. I'm seeing mistakes that they're making that have put them in debt with brand new homes, brand new fancy boats and trailers and cars, and they're absolutely living for today instead of keeping anything salted away for the future. Am I wrong? Uh, You know, I think there is... um I think that's typical of every generation, right? There are some people in every generation that do that. Um, Interesting thing statistically about millennials is so far they've shown a little less interest in buying homes. And that won't kill them if they invest wisely. The real value of buying a home is that it becomes a forced savings plan that really by the time we retire makes us somewhat wealthy and comfortable and safe. Uh, and if you don't buy a home, 
you really have to squirrel away a lot of money consistently and uh, regularly, or you won't have the nest egg, that benefit, you know, to, in order to pay rent throughout your retirement years if you don't own a home. So uh, that's kind of what I'm seeing with millennials. But certainly the problem you point out, Zeb, there are people in every generation, uh, whether we're talking about our parents or our children, uh, every generation has had some people who uh, lived for today and could not bring themselves to think about retirement. And it's, it's tragic because everyone gets old. Everyone eventually reaches a point where they can no longer work. They're not productive anymore. And then uh, that lack of having a nest egg is devastating. Let me say that saving money or investing money is, I think, uh, kind of playing Russian roulette with all the chambers loaded. The banks aren't going to pay you any interest. The stock market is volatile. You can't bury it in your backyard. What would you tell people is the best way to invest and try to get some residual effect on your money? That's a great question, great question. And, and it's all about uh, diversification. Uh, you're right, banks aren't going to pay you a lot of interest. Having a little bit of money, a little bit of money in the bank, though, has, keeps you with some money that's safe. Uh, nothing can happen to that money. Uh, putting some money in the stock market, absolutely there is, as you say, Russian roulette, uh, good description. Um, it's very risky. But that risk over the long haul for most people has paid off over the years. Uh, you know, we've seen even in the last uh, 14 or well, 18 months, since Donald Trump won the election, the stock market has rallied tremendously, and it's off its highs just a little bit. But but still, it's uh, the, the market rally has been impressive, uh, to say the least. Um, so uh, stock market returns are good, but risky. So then the a middle ground is bonds, and bonds are a little bit more, uh, a little trickier to buy. So I usually buy bond funds or encourage people to buy bond funds rather than uh, bonds directly. Uh, but you can, uh, if you have the resources and a good broker, you can buy bonds directly and avoid the management fees, and that's worth something. Uh, bond fund fees usually aren't too great, but still. Eliminating those because the bond returns tend to be lower and somewhat uh, safer and more secure. So a mix of cash, bonds, and stocks, uh, as well as owning a home, so you have a real estate exposure. That kind of diversified approach can help anyone uh, move toward a safe retirement. Let me say this, and again, I'm open for your scrutiny on this, but I have said on my program many, many times, Devin, that in America today whether it's the younger generation or even past the millennial generation, that we, because of government dependency and the government so easy to pass out taxpayer dollars to just give to people on welfare programs, we've lost our ability to see the future and work for what we want to achieve, and we've got the tin cup attitude of gimme, gimme, gimme. Am I wrong? Well, you know, I have... I've written uh, thoughtfully about what I call this self self reliance dilemma, um, and I think there it, it we've seen it proven over and over again uh, in almost any way you can test it that people need to feel self reliant in order to become as self reliant as they can be. Now, not everyone has the same ability to, to care for themselves, and all of us get help, even though we sometimes want to think of ourselves as self-made. We all get and got help, but the fact is you're right that we all have to develop that same sense of personal responsibility and personal accountability in order for us to be happy, in order for us to become financially secure, uh, for our com country to thrive, for our communities to thrive. Uh, at every level, we all have to be taking uh, reasonable self-responsibility, uh, self-accountability, self-reliance. Uh, 
great principles that well, you know one of the faults that i see in our society and again correct me is i think our education system is really lacking uh the sure they'll teach them how to get on the internet and talk to people in taiwan or whatever but i think we're really lacking in teaching kids how to be successful and what they need to do to attain success well, the hard work the ethics the knowledge of how to handle money and i think our education system is dropping the ball well, there may be some truth to that. What I really love about your community is uh, there are so many people who still, uh, in your audience, are getting up every day uh, to milk cows and work hard yep. uh, Absolutely. In, in a variety of different ways. Uh, people in your neck of the woods know how to work. And that will influence not only themselves, but their children and their grandchildren. Uh, so uh, there's no question that uh, nationally this is a, a bigger problem. But, uh, you know, the folks, the hardworking folks in southern Idaho are uh, a role model for the world in learning how to work. I agree. You know, one of the simplistic questions would be, how in the world do you tell people how, how to get out of debt and stay out of debt? In today's society, with the escalation of prices and everything, how do you tell people that they can get out of debt and not be underwater again in the future? Well, the first, you know, it's, it's a complex problem, but, but it starts by, uh, you know, sort of figuring out where you are. If you can afford to make all of your debt payments plus a little bit more, then you do that and you start by making payments on, in my opinion, the smallest loan first, so that you start paying off loans. Because most of us end up, especially in our early married life, our young lives, we start with a credit card and a car loan and a mortgage, and pretty soon we've got debt coming out of our ears. You start on the smallest one and work towards the biggest one, and eventually... Uh, if you stay committed to use all of that money uh, that you were spending on debt, uh, you can not only pay off the, the little loans quickly, you can pay off your mortgage much more quickly than you would have. Some people can't afford to make all of their payments. They're in a difficult situation where they uh, are really borrowing money each month in order to live. That's a scary situation. In that situation, uh, most people need to sell something, whether it's to sell the car, the boat, the house. Something needs to go in order to recalibrate. And then there are a few people that are in a situation where even selling something won't solve the, the problem. And then you need to work either with a, a bankruptcy attorney or you need to uh, work with a debt counseling service where you can get some debt forgiveness because uh, you'll never dig your way out of that hole. And just uh, pretending you will isn't going to make it happen. Absolutely. One final thought. In your book, you talk to people about how to use your finances to do more good in the world. Explain that. Well, you know, I, that's really what motivates me. That's really my passion and, and so much of why I uh, care about uh, using money well is so that we can use it for good. I like to say that money's real, only real value is the good we can do with it. And, of course, that starts by taking care of our family. Don't get me wrong. You know, we've got to be able to uh, provide for our kids, help them get through college and all that sort of uh, stuff. We've got to provide for ourselves. Um, but I, I love seeing people then being able to do things to help in the community. I, I'm a member of Rotary, and, uh, you know, there's so many good service organizations from the, the Lions and the Kiwanis, and there's so many different ways to get involved not only in the community, but then to find, have ways to help work towards solving problems in the world. Uh, you know, that we in, in the United States uh, live in a rich country by almost any reasonable measure, right. and, and there are a lot of people in the world who don't. Uh, 700 million people go to bed every night uh, wondering where they'll get food tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, about the same number go to bed uh, wondering where they'll get water clean water tomorrow uh, and and some don't have any access to clean water and so they live with the constant uh, infections that result from drinking bad water so there are all kinds of problems that need solving but we're making such great progress you know uh, when I was born I'll date myself here when I was born in 1965 about 60 percent of the world's population lived 
in extreme poverty. And today that number is down to about 10%. Uh, the actual number of people in extreme poverty has been halved just during my lifetime. We're on a trajectory, if we stay the course and uh, committed to this, to completely eliminate extreme poverty uh, by 2030. Um, it's a very exciting time, but it takes a variety of people uh, helping uh, and contributing to those efforts to bring that progress about. Absolutely, so absolutely. That's what I love to see people do is to be able to find a way to give back, whether it's in the community or in Africa or India or um, you know at the local hospital, whatever it is, to find a way to give back with their time and money to make the world a better place. Absolutely. Devin, tell me a little bit about the book as far as where it's sold, where people can find it. I'm going to try to get a copy myself. Well, thank you. The great thing is it's available for download free from Amazon.com. So if you go to Amazon.com and search for 925 ideas, you'll see my book there come up, and you can uh, download a copy free to your Kindle also available from barnesandnoble.com. You can buy a printed copy from Amazon or Barnes & Noble, and you can also download it for your Nook uh, or on your iPad with uh, iTunes. Uh, and it's always, the downloads are always free. So a uh, great way to get a copy of that book and get some, uh, get some tips. Just peruse it for the ones you want. Any more books in the future or ideas and thoughts for books? Well, I'm working on a book now about how the world can solve all of the, all the world's big problems. Oh, uh, to eliminate poverty and disease, and uh, so uh, that that's been a project I've been working on for four years, and I it it overwhelms me. The the, the project of the book is, is is almost as big as the the scope of that book. So anyway, it's that that's like my current project. Well, I want to tell you that you're welcome back anytime. I'm going to try to get a copy of this and have you back after I finish it. And I wish you a lot of success with your 90, 925 ideas to help save money. Devin Thorpe uh, down in Utah. May I ask, sir, what part of Utah, Salt Lake area or where? Yep, I, I live right downtown Salt Lake City. May I tell you that you take your life in your hands every day driving down there. Conditions have changed over the years. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> well, thank you. Exactly right, Jeff. Thank you for being on the program, my friend, and come back soon. Thank you so much. God bless. Right. Thank you very much, Jeff. Take care now. All right. Thank you. Wow. Nice man right there, Devin Thorpe, and financial expert with the book called 925 Ideas to Help You Save Money, Get Out of Debt, Retire a Millionaire, so you can leave your mark on the world. Very good. Uh, oh, I've got to leave my mark right now with the weather forecast. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road in Jerome. Hello, Don Scarrow and the crew. My goodness. 324-7657. That's the number. Or you can go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com. Check out all the delicious meats. I mean, all the different bacons like the buckboard bacon, a little leaner and more economic. Oh, my goodness, and all the breakfast sausages and the brats and the smoked hams. Oh, it's just absolutely phenomenal. You're going to love it. Scarrow's Meats in Jerome. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Looks like we have a storm system that's rolling into the valley and could stick around for the next couple of days. Here's your weather forecast for us up at the ranch. Rain showers likely mostly before noon. Cloudy skies looking at a high of 52. Winds out of the east right around 8 miles an hour. Be coming out of the southwest by this afternoon and could gust as high as 20 miles an hour. For tonight, 50% chance of showers in the forecast, mostly after midnight. Possible snow showers in the higher elevations. Mostly cloudy skies with a low of 42. Tomorrow, 80% chance of rain showers in the forecast, high of 56. Windy as well, gusts as high as 25 miles an hour. For Friday, we do have a very slight chance of sunshine. Could see a sliver of it with a high of 52. And then more clouds could be rolling in for Friday night with a low of 33. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 20% chance of showers in the forecast, mostly cloudy skies. That is your weather for Zebeth Ranch. Wow, it sounds like I better put some stampede strings on my hat. Woo, it's going to blow. They say it's going to blow. Anyway, the weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome. Number to call, 324-7657. Don Scarrow and the crew, always with the best of delicious meats. They are changing the way we eat 
one delicious bite at a time. Wow, we've had a good program, fun program today, and I want to say thank you to all my guests. I want to say thank you to all of our listeners, and even though we didn't have the 930 guest, and we were going to talk about free speech versus hate speech with uh, John Zemerick, we're going to try to get him back on the air in the next couple of days to discuss that topic. Caller, quickly, I've got short time. Go ahead, please. You know, Zeb, I've been busy all morning driving around. I've been listening to this program, and I look at the industrious, hard-working people of the Minicasia area, but all of southern Idaho is really magic, like it says. It really is a magic valley, and it's because of the people. I mean, you you can remember at one time in nineteen early 1900s, all it was was sagebrush in a couple of buildings, and now look at it. And it's unbelievable. But you see, Idaho is the last bastion of conservative logic. And uh, if we allow this thing to go south like it is in California or Washington and Oregon, and uh, even signs of it in in Arizona, you know, even the mayor of, of, of Salt Lake City is a Democrat, you say to yourself, we cannot allow Idaho to to go south to the point where we lose what we are because it may literally be a place where the phoenix will be reborn here in southern Idaho at Idaho to save the rest of the country in a, in some in some respect I agree I agree. You know, uh, some of the guests that I've had on the program this morning were inspirational, like the last man, Devin Thorpe, and then, of course, talking to Brian Crabtree and others. Uh, I, I've got room for optimism that we can overcome the evil. Randy, i got to run, but thank you for listening, and drive around more often. I appreciate your calls. Yeah, I'm busy. All right. Okay. All right, buddy. Hey, roll into spring with the best of tires. Had a big spring tire sale going on right now at all seven Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Ooh, they will serve you. And I mean service is really the key. They come abounding out the door. May we help you, and they will. I tell you what, these tires that you need for your cars, pickups, SUVs, horse trailers, boat trailers, now we're getting closer to the heavy travel season, you'd better be ready. And they can help save you money. Like on the Ultra Z900 for your passenger cars, the ultimate in tire technology. Or for your uh, pickups, the backcountry all-terrain. All of these tires and so many more ready for your vehicle. Just stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. The best. Your or Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in and see them today. We're going to wrap it up, put it back in the box for today, and open it up again tomorrow morning at 8.06 when we'll saddle the horse and ride for three hours right here on Zebeth Ranch. And thank you for listening. And we always say at the end of our program, the way things were are the way things ought to be. See you tomorrow.